What I'm now going to do is show you how to put a grid onto your map. Some virtual tabletops will automatically take your image and put a grid across it, and others of them will not. And if we're printing on paper, we would certainly want to be able to print the grid onto our map. So there's a number of ways of doing this, and I'm going to show you uh, a couple of them. The first one is the most obvious one. First of all, we'll make sure that we've got the color black selected. And then what we're going to do is use the draw tool up here, hex or square overlay. We'll make sure that we've got a square grid selected. We'll make sure that we've got five foot selected for our grid. Um, make sure that all of your labeling is turned off, unless you do want labeling on your grid, but generally I don't. And that's it, then you just click apply and bingo. Now, this grid looks fine, and for many people that's good enough, but there are times when, when I'm really trying to get a, a highly professional looking map, I don't want the grid to be on the outside. I just want it to be covering the floor space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that grid, and I'm going to show you another technique where we only map just the floor. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to show all of the floors so I'm going to click on the layers function here and I'm going to turn back on that secret room we had. There we go. Now I want to move both of these floors over but it's going to be a little bit tricky and I'll show you why. Um, it's very hard to select a floor just by itself especially when this floor here is put on the floors layer but remember this one's not put on the floors layer it's put on the secret rooms layer. So let me it's probably just easy for me to show you. I'm going to select the copy command and then I'm going to select this here. And as you can see I've selected the wall and the floor. You can see this but I've got two entities selected. Right click and I'll go combine. Now this is basically you can apply Boolean logic and a whole range of things to your selections. So I'm going to go combine and and then you right click again layer and equals floors. Now by doing that you can see that I've now only got one item selected. The wall has been unselected because we're selecting only things which are on that layer. I'm going to click do it and I'm going to open up my map a little bit and I'm going to post this over here. We're going to work on this as a grid layer. We can't do that with this um, selection over here and I'll show you why. I'm going to select copy, click on it. You can see we've got the two items selected, both the floor as we understand it and the wall. But we moved both of those onto the secret rooms layer so when I click combine and layer is floor it's, it's going to give me nothing. It's going to set that back to zero because there are no floors. So in order to move just the floor, I'm going to do something a little bit sneaky. I'm going to click on the copy command, select it, and as you can see we've got the two items selected, the wall and the floor. I'm then going to right click, go combine, and so far it's pretty much the same as selecting from the layer. When I right click, instead of selecting for the layer, I'm going to click this one here, more, fill style. I'm going to right click, and that brings up the fill style dialog, and I'm going to select wall cobble grey. OK. Now you can see it's selected one item. It's actually just selected the wall cobblestone which I, I used to fill the bottom of that, uh, that floor. And then I'm going to click do it and I'm going to move this one over here where it belongs. Bonk. There we go. So now we have two floors. Brilliant. The next thing I'm going to do is merge these together by using the um, uh, multi-poly tool, do it. They're now all one floor area. This is quite important from what we're about to do. I want to have a grid that works that is placed just over this silhouetted area here. Now to do that I'm going to need to create a special type of fill. You click on the fill, um, uh, fill style panel here. We go to scalable hatching and we're then going to create our own scalable hatching. So I'm going to click on U. I'm going to call this one 5 foot grid. Click on OK. So for set 1, each of these sets draws a different line on your hatching. For set 1, I'm going to have it being the line style is solid. 
the angle will be zero, the spacing will be five foot. The next thing I'm going to do, actually, so I can actually see what I'm working on, I'm going to change this from sample width of quarter of a foot, I'm going to change it to, say, 25 feet, so quite large. Set two, it's a solid line, it's set at an angle of 130 degrees, no, I just want it at 90 degrees, and I want it at a spacing of five foot. Bingo, we've now got our grid. Set 3 is turned off, set 4, everything is 0. So basically we now have a 5 foot hash grid. I'm going to click on OK. Now let me just show you what would happen if we were to draw that. You can see it's now the selected um, style. If I was to draw that, I've now got this grid which automatically fills in. Get the picture so you can actually create a very powerful um, tool for use uh, in many, many situations. So how do we apply that to here? It's really simple. I'm going to click on the Change Property tool. I'm going to click on this new floor that I've created. I'm going to right click and then do it. And then I'm going to say I'm going to change the layer from floors to hex and square grid. Um, I'm then going to change the sheets to, yes you guessed it, the grid. And here's the most important thing. I'm going to change the fill style to this one here, five foot fill style. Click on OK. You can now see we've got our grid. I'm now going to take this. Now I'm having trouble selecting it and that's probably because I've got the hex and square grids set to fixed. So I need to unselect that so I can actually move my grid around. So now I'm going to take it. Now I can select it and I'm going to grab it from there and I'm going to pop it smack bang in the middle there. Now if we were to zoom back into our map you can see that our grid beautifully beautifully draws across this. So that's a very sophisticated way of getting a grid to go just where you want it. And if you want your grid to be a little bit more prominent than that you can actually affect it by clicking sheets and effects and then going to your grid and you can see what we've got a transparency and a glow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that glow slightly and I'm going to make it a little bit stronger and I'm going to make the blur radius a little bit larger. I'm going to make a 0.15 and you will now see that you've got a slightly more prominent grid. The other thing that you can do is you can see how the grid sits over the walls. That's fine but if you don't want that it's really simple to change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the sheets and effects again. You see how the grid is positioned in the drawing above the walls or further. I'm going to move this up, 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 just above water. Now when I click on it, because your map is drawn in the order, you can actually see that your walls do not have the grid. It's only your floors. Even your statue sits above the grid. Beautiful.